Hello everybody, doing another POV cage upgrade, but this is for one that I think a lot of people are actually going to enjoy. We are moving our black rat who is actually pretty cold, but he's a, uh, he's silly. But so here is this really fun little setup. So this is a four by two uh, dubia cage. You can see the reptile habitats there. So four by two by two. Obviously, some people would probably put these guys in something smaller, but these are crepuscular animals and they can actually be fairly active during the day as well. And they are very active. So giving them a lot of space with lots of opportunities to climb, bask, hide, all those fun things is something that I absolutely want to do. And the Eastern rat, so I said black rat, he's potentially an Eastern rat slash black rat slash maybe even gray rat with the range where he comes from slash obsoleto slash you get the idea, right? So this guy right here, he's an adult, he's wild caught. So this was part of three animals um, that we were watching for nature's educators that we talked about before. He is in the black rat video. Um, however, he is probably not going to be part of their program going forward. So he is actually going to become a permanent resident here. While Bindi, the Woma Python, who earns the Woma Python bad reputation for being bitey, and Angel, the albino Burmese Python, who has now gone on us uh, to an educational site, uh, will be going back at some point. So this guy right here will be probably guy. I'm not very good at sexing adult colubrids very well, so I'll admit to that right now, but probable male when you look at that tail. We're going to get him in here, and we're going to talk about the cage. So, we're going to get him in there. Arr, there we go. In he goes, in he goes. Now, when I sat there and talked about the whole black rat, eastern rat, obsoleta, gray rat, blah, 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 blah. A lot of that, their care for captive husbandry, we'll just let him go, um, is very similar to that of a lot of popular and very common North American colubrids that are kept in the uh, hobby. Here, we're going to get them all the way in there. Um, so these guys, so the care for these guys is very similar to that of Texas rats, of the gray rats, of corn snakes, of emery rats, heck, even a lot of the king snakes. The exception, of course, being like California king snake and like the trans pecos rat snake and the gray banded king snake where they come from uh, drier, warmer areas from different parts of the United States. These guys basically from like the East Coast all the way over across to like Middle America is where a lot of this husbandry can very much overlap. So this will be a very good example of someone who, even though if you're not keeping an Eastern rat or a black rat, whatever, you're keeping a corn snake, you're keeping an Eastern king, you're keeping a speckled king, a chain king, any of those really cool uh, North American colubrids, this is a setup that you can do. So now this cage was technically part of the large amount of cages that we're going in for the ball python SPI study, which we are finally, hopefully, maybe going to be getting the ball rolling on in case you've all forgotten about that, because I almost did as well. Um, but we're looking very promising to that. I'll try to remember to put the link for it in here. Otherwise, it'll be um, in the other cage videos down uh, that you can check out the playlist after that. So we're essentially what we're going to do is because this cage is not necessarily going to be part of the study. This is going to be a well spread out cage that is set up fairly similarly, but obviously with a lot more clutter to that ball python SPI study. And essentially what we're going to do is kind of monitor how he was being kept. This wild caught animal is then kept in a 40 breeder um, with a little bit of clutter, but still kept fairly minimally, obviously being in quarantine and such. And then now into this kind of cage, and we're going to keep an eye on his behavior and kind of monitor where he spends a lot of his time, very similar to that of the ball pythons, although obviously not part of the actual ball python study, to get an idea for essentially another very popular pet snake, how they would use these larger enclosures. So let's actually talk about the enclosure a little bit. Again, to be a cage, four, two, two aces. Now the substrate, this is the substrate mix that I use for a lot of my stuff. This is a mix of cypress mulch, a mix of organic topsoil and sphagnum moss. And that is um, not the sphagnum moss that's like the nice little fluffy stuff in there. It's actually like that kind of almost peat moss, but there actually are two different ones. There's a sphagnum moss, which is kind of mulched up like the peat moss and then peat moss and then the sphagnum moss. And that's what this mixture is here. It's what I use for a lot of the different substrates. Sometimes I'll add in sand, sometimes more sand, less dirt, more sand, less sphagnum moss, more wood chips, less sand, blah, 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 blah. You can customize it basically to whatever species you're doing. This is a basic 
good mix for a fair amount of uh, humidity retention and naturalist looking. Obviously, this is not a full bioactive enclosure. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of like having enclosures where I can move stuff around and change it up more easily, not only for my sake, but for the animal's sake when it comes to enrichment and just kind of changing stuff up for them. And then so we have a lot of these branches instead of that PVC one, which I technically do still have another one, but I'm actually probably going to use that in um, another cage as a climbing perch. But being out in my big kind of rural property, I have lots of branches. And so I cleaned and treated a lot of these other branches around from a couple different types of trees that are spread everywhere. Obviously, the eastern rat snake, black rat snake, and a lot of North American colubrids are semi-arboreal to some degree. These guys are well known for climbing up trees, getting into birds' nests, getting nesting birds, even getting squirrels and more arboreal animals as different prey items. They're quite generalists when it comes to their diets, so lots of climbing opportunities here for him to get in and around. We have both a a uh, UVB light and just a low wattage uh, halogen basking bulb for a little bit of a basking spot where you can bask here as well as down here. Um, we have one hide, two hide, three hide, nye, 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 kind of hide, more something to, for him to kind of mess with as well as obviously when you look here, all the lights kind of over there. It's pretty dark over there. He can kind of choose where he wants to go in the gradient of both temperature this way and this way and light from this way to this way with the UVB being over here. So he can kind of choose where he wants to be. A lot of colubrids will actually, they'll usually come out and they'll sit and bask under there. Although with the amount of height that is here, he'll probably end up spending a lot of time there on top of his rock or even on these lower branches when it comes to his UV basking. It's a really nice setup, I think. Obviously, not everyone's going to agree. There are ways that we can improve it, but with all of these different climbing opportunities, lots of things that we can use to change it up that adds enrichment, that has texture from the actual rock to the wood, to the fake plants, to the different mulch, the humid hide there with that little rock that will hold on to that heat a little bit longer, as well as it adds to, it doubles up and being a bit of a weight. Um, not so much with these guys, but for more heavy body snakes, a lot of times when you use what I really like, this little thing where you can use these types of uh, more inexpensive uh, plastic containers or lids or bowls or whatever and turning them into hides, they usually are a little lightweight. So if you want to put a rock on here, not only does that add a texture thing, it adds a weight to it so that way they don't pull it off and knock it over. It also adds something to where if it's over on the warmer side or under the heat or on top of the heat, whatever you decide to do, um, then it will also be able to add something to where they can thermal regular a little bit more. It's a little bit of a warm spot for them, but obviously not with the problems of the uh, plug-in hot rocks, which for whatever reason are still being sold. So just a really nice little quick update. We'll get in on him. He's going to be checking this out for a little while. I might throw some B-roll on top of this video if I get a chance to. I'm still pretty busy uh, with the reptile show coming up. I think this will actually be the video that will be out on the day of the reptile show. So if you're watching this before you get there, uh, hope to see you soon. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little fun video showing off the really cool black rat snake that I know everybody really likes, that I'm really excited to work with because I do really like the black rat too. Uh, my calico girl is still pretty small. Probably won't be breeding um, this nondescript general locality of kind of eastern mid, uh, eastern mid southeast United States, like eastern Missouri kind of a type deal. Um, with the calico. At some point, I may pick up another calico or some other type of black rat if I ever decide I actually want to breed them. Probably not. I just think they're really cool. So a really good opportunity to show off a fun little kind of cage build. The really cool animal. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to check out the full playlist of all of my other cage upgrades, different things that I've tried, different things that have worked, different things that have not worked, um, you can check out the playlist here. It's the enclosures and upgrades playlist. There's quite a few in there, so it really helps my algorithm if you want to just kind of roll through there. You can see kind of the progression of how I did things over the last two, three years as I have learned more, experienced more, talked to more people. Um, it kind of broadened out and generalized my knowledge a little bit more about these guys and husband in general, because, you know, they always say that, you know, it's if you're not changing, you're stagnant. So that's what we like. We always want to change that up. Oh, there he is. He's made it all the way over there. These guys are pretty long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, thank you so much. Hope everyone is having a great day and we will check you next time.